Hi there, welcome to Good News Street, where we're on a digital Sunday school tour through Mark's Gospel. Let's begin by talking about party food. When do you eat a meal to celebrate something? What's your favourite party food? What's a food that you only eat once a year because it's a special food? And is there any food that reminds you of something every time you eat it? Press pause and talk about party food with someone now. Let's pray now. To keep us from getting distracted, let's put our hands together and close our eyes. Dear Jesus, thanks for giving us all the things we need. Thanks for giving us food to eat and making it delicious and tasty. Thank you that you also gave us the Bible so that we have everything we need to know you. Amen. Today's reading is about a special meal called the Passover, or Festival of Unleavened Bread, that Jews like Jesus eat to remember a time when God rescued them. We're going to hear about Jesus and his friends eating this meal from Mark chapter 14, verses 12 to 25. And after, we'll talk about why they ate this meal and what it tells us about Jesus. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters. The teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me? There's one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. Truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. So, it's time for the Passover feast. This is a meal and a few days which helped the Jews to remember and celebrate one of the times God rescued them. When they were slaves in Egypt and the Pharaoh wouldn't let them leave to worship God, God rescued them. He sent a bunch of plagues to show the Egyptians that he is God. The last one was that the firstborn son of every family would die unless they killed a perfect lamb and put the lamb's blood on their door frame. The lamb died so that the firstborn son wouldn't have to. And then the Israelites escaped from Egypt. Jesus wanted to eat the meal that celebrates that rescue with his friends. Because it's going to be the last meal he eats with them before he's killed. One of his friends was going to tell the people who want to kill Jesus where to find him. And later on this same night, he'll lead the soldiers to arrest him. And at this meal, Jesus retells the story of Passover. First, he takes some bread from the table and breaks it and tells them, 
that. Like the lamb, which had to be killed at Passover, he will be the sacrifice, broken for them to take away their sin. Then he takes a cup of wine and shares it with all of his friends. The wine is red like blood. So Jesus tells them that, just like the blood on the doorframe meant the eldest son wouldn't die, his blood would be spilt so that no one has to die. And every time they had bread and wine after this, the disciples would remember what Jesus had done for them. But what does this mean for us? Jesus is perfect. This shouldn't really come as a surprise to us after we've seen how Jesus lives. He has never sinned. He always chooses to do good things. He always listens to and obeys his father, God. And even though that's a difficult way to live, he did it so that he could be the perfect sacrifice. Just like that lamb had to be perfect to die for the firstborn son. And Jesus died in our place. It was always what he'd planned to do. And it was the only way that we could be rescued. We deserve to be punished by God for all that we've done wrong. And that punishment would have to last forever. Because ignoring God is just so bad. But because Jesus was perfect, and he didn't deserve to be punished for what he's done, he can take all all of everybody's punishment so that we don't have to be punished and we should remember what Jesus has done because it really does change your life to know that someone would love you that much that they would suffer and die so that you don't have to also we should say thanks for what he's done so when we eat and drink that will remind us of everything that Jesus has done for us. We're going to play a game of Pictionary now. I'm going to start drawing things from the story, and you're going to have to guess what they are before I finish the picture. Are you ready for number one? Do you know what it is yet? Can you tell what this picture's of? That's our Passover lamb. What about this one? Have you got it yet? Do you know what that is? Maybe this will help. Now can you tell? It's a table. Did you get that right? What about this? Do you know what that is now? It's a cross. Do you know what that's going to be? That's some bread. Do you remember where that came into the story? Do you know what this is? I'll give you a clue. The real ones are a lot bigger. It's a pyramid. What about this? Oh wait, that's not even the picture. There we go. That's the bit. What's that? It's the wine, that's right. And what about this? Do 
Do you know what that is yet? It's a doorway. Did you get them all? Well done. Let's pray. Near the beginning of this prayer, I'm going to leave a pause in the prayer for us to say sorry to Jesus for the wrong things that we have done or thought or said. Dear Jesus, you lived a perfect life so that you could be our perfect sacrifice. We're sorry for all the things that we do wrong, especially for Thank you so much for taking our place and being punished for our sin. It's wonderful that you love us enough to do that. Amen. Thanks for watching Good News Street. To help you think and talk some more about this, there's a worksheet with questions, a reminder of the memory verse and some things to pray for. You can also find some songs that go along with our theme. Oh, and you don't have to wait a whole week to visit Good News Street again, as our next stop will be on Good Friday. See you then!